are going to go straight to the word and then we'll pray. While I stood there during the, pray the prayer session, the Holy Spirit just changed everything that I prepared to do. One of the things that makes us people that God can use to bet revivals in our time is that we are yielded. We are so yielded to the dealings of the Spirit that we can change at any time according to His will. Do we understand what I'm saying? In other words, you may be going left and the Holy Spirit may say, turn right. Even when it is against your plan. And if you must be a revivalist, if you must be one whom God will use to transform your generation, you must be susceptible to the move of the Spirit part time. And God has called for this meeting because there is an awakening going on globally in this season. In the midst of all the chaos, and those of you that are conversant with the news, you know what's happening around the world. But I want to assure us that in the midst of the crisis and the chaos going on in the world system, God is doing a global resetting and a global regrouping. Are we together? The darkness and the confusion in the world does not affect what God is doing. As a matter of fact, the darkness and the confusion in the world has a way of... Um, it's, it gives an advantage to the dealings and the work of God. The Bible says darkness will cover the earth and what? Gross darkness the people. But it says in the midst of that, God is preparing to shine his glory and his light through us. Are we together? So we cannot assure ourselves that things will get better in the world system. As a matter of fact, the world now is confused of where they can get the next solution. And the reason is because the solution to the global depletion is right here. God set up this conference so that somebody here can be awakened. Because inside of your spirit is the light that is needed for your generation. I thought I was speaking to somebody. If you said amen, you knew I was talking to you. And so, a lot of things will be redefined in our time. One of which is revival. Are we together? And that's the reason for these kinds of meetings. So that we can understand the current programming of God. And come into alignment with what God is doing. And I want us to pray one prayer before we get seated. I'm just going to share the word briefly. And then we are going to rise and pray. And in this service... There is a group of people that God wants to visit. And I think if we are done with that, the meeting is over. We can come tomorrow and have a normal service. So for those of us who are following online for different parts of Nigeria, we apologize for the technical abnormalities we are having. Uh, we do hope that by tomorrow, everything will be as they should be. But is it okay for us to pray one prayer before we sit down? If you can hear me, say amen. amen. I want you to pray in the next two, three minutes because you don't have so much time to pray. Lord, in the midst of what you are doing in this world, do not pass me by. Find a vessel in my life. Regardless of my family background, regardless of my frailties, regardless of my weakness, if you are looking for vessels in your end time agenda lord may i be counted worthy to represent my generation to represent my family to represent my community to represent my region my territory lift your voice and pray in the next two three minutes come on are you praying add passion to your prayer Spirit of the Sovereign God, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the living one. Spirit 
of the sovereign God. Come and pray. Come and pray. Come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Do not pass me by in this dispensation, in this generation. If you are anointing men, find a vessel in my life. If you are setting men on fire for the purpose of the advancement of the kingdom, Lord, I avail myself. I may be weak, but I avail myself. I may be poor, but I avail myself. I may be rejected by men, but I avail myself. Come on, are you praying? Cry out like, like Bartimaeus. Cry out like Bartimaeus. I may not have anything to offer, but Lord, I offer my life. Use me for your glory. Harakosi kaparada barada bokosiaba. In Jesus' name. Last prayer point before we sit down. Lord, whatever it is you have come to distribute in this conference, whoever you plan to visit by reason of this program, Father, may I be included amongst them. If you have come to anoint men, find a vessel in me. If you have come to set men on fire in this program, in this conference, whatever it is that you plan to do, add me on your list. If you have come to raise the end time revivalists, if you have come to separate men for the advancement of your kingdom, if there is a fire you have come to ignite in the lives of men through this program, find me a vessel, lift your voice and pray. He's bringing everything in obedience to Christ. He's bringing everything in obedience to Christ. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Remolding everything in obedience to Christ, transforming everything in obedience to Christ. Place a mantle upon my life, place an anointing upon my life. Bring a shift. Bring a shift. Cause a supernatural encounter to happen in my life today. Thank you, Father. Let the weight of your glory come in this place. 
and let there be a visitation of fire in Jesus name please be seated You know what I'm seeing right now in this place? I see chariots of fire moving all across this place. Sometimes God is the most ready when we think he's not. You didn't hear what I said? Sometimes God is the most ready when we think he's not. I thank God because none of these human factors have a way of distorting what he wants to do. God told me tonight that there are people he will anoint here. And I'd like you to know that God is still going to do it. Please make sure you are not distracted, including the walkers. Make sure you are attentive and let's minimize movement. I'm not going to preach for long. I don't even have a message again. I prepared to share something, but that's not what the Lord would have me share. I just want to share what was ringing in my spirit when I walked in here. And then, as God will have by his mercies, I'll share one or two encounters I've had with God. And... Uh, trust God that will pray. In this meeting, there are revivalists that God will set apart for himself. Mm. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 22. I tell you, the, the power of God is through. I'm literally shaking as I am here. My left hand, it's almost difficult for me to raise it up beyond this point. And anytime I feel something like this, I know there are presence of strange kind of angels. And in a moment of time, there are people who will be ordained by the Lord this evening. Can you whisper to the Lord and say, Lord, anoint me afresh. We spy it again, Lord, anoint me afresh. Jesus. Sunna Yesu Gadona Sunna Yesu Ezekiel 22. Is it on the screen? If it's not, let me just read from my Bible so that we can conserve time. Ezekiel 22. Verse 30. Popular scripture. And then. Kaba, Yekabusia, Kabande. While I'm preaching, I don't know who, but I'm suspecting it's around this left side. There's someone the hand of the Lord will come upon while I'm preaching. And don't get distracted when the Holy Spirit begins to minister. He has his way of touching people. But this person, you will feel something that will overwhelm your body. You will feel it. You'll feel an overwhelming presence 
on your body. I just pray you'll be able to stand. But God is anointing you with the gift of his presence. That's what he's saying. And the reason is because you will become a carrier, a carrier of the literal presence of God. It will become the aroma around your life. It will become the aroma. I say, help him, please. Because I can feel it. There are two other people I'm seeing that God will touch like that. It will just overwhelm you. It will just overwhelm you. You will become a minister of the presence. That's what the Lord is saying. A minister of the presence. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. There's fire coming on somebody now. You will feel it. Fire, literally, very strong. And it will move through you like electricity, very quick. But you'll feel it very hot. You can't stand it. But there is a special grace that is coming on your life in this season. Right now, fire, you will feel it very strong. It will go through you like as quick as electricity from your head down and I'm seeing two of them please make sure you help them so that they don't injure themselves but I'm seeing it very strong fire literally oh, come on those two people Lord let it happen by your power let it happen by the ministry of angels in this place You know this song? See his glory. See his glory. See his glory come down. Everest. His glory come down. See His glory come down. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. So I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I found no one I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I, find, I found no one I sought for a man. That was what I heard when I came in. I just heard that sentence. I sought for a man. And God says, that's your message. Unprepared. Amen. So I'm not going to preach what is on the book. I'm just going to preach as the Spirit of God is speaking. You see, you see that ministry in the last days will change. It's beyond book and paper. You literally begin to live in the presence of God and you live prepared. It becomes your lifestyle. Because at any time, as occasion demands, God will warrant that he will release through his vessels that which he intends to do per time. And that was what the Lord said. Oh, I feel it very strong. I feel that fire strong. There's somebody God is anointing. And he's doing it with fire. I feel it very strong. And it's not just one person. I'm seeing two, three people. 
I sought for a man. I sought for a man. I sought for a man. You are here in this conference because God is looking for a man from your family that will end that reproach and calamity. You are here in this conference because before you were born, God had designed that you will be the answer to the cause that exists in your bloodline. But there needs to be an awakening. Because we have a situation where the deliverers are asleep. We have a situation where the saviors are at ease. The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You are here in this conference because there has to be a reset. God needs to tell you something that will open your eyes and connect all the missing dots. You see the reason why the more you keep crying, it looks like nothing is going to happen in your family. You see the reason why God is allowing you to feel and to experience the same things that people in your family are experiencing. The reason is because you were supposed to be the deliverer. But then you have to feel the infirmity that the people are feeling so that compassion can well up inside of you. And out of that will flow an anointing that brings generational deliverance. I sought for a man. Now, it's not about gender. It could be a man, it could be a woman, whichever be the case. What God is saying is, I am looking for that person that will volunteer to be the solution. Let me tell you something about the move of God, friends. The move of God is actually the activity of man that gives God space to find expression within a territory. The move of God is not what the Holy Spirit does. No. I told us on Sunday, those of us who attend Numatech, I told us on Sunday, I said that God on earth is illegal until he's licensed to operate. One time, Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory was having a conversation with Jesus. Listen carefully, we are going to pray soon. Kenneth Hagin was having a conversation with Jesus. He was so graced that he had literal encounters with the Lord Jesus. And he had them severally in his life. And so in one of those open vision encounters, Jesus was speaking with him. And then all of a sudden, as they were conversing, a demon appeared between them and the demon began to make all kinds of noise and disturb the place so much so that Kenneth Hagin couldn't hear what Jesus was saying and then Kenneth Hagin became disturbed because he was like ah, how can Jesus be here and a demon will appear and the demon is disturbing our conversation and Jesus is doing any, nothing about it in fact the story had it that Jesus kept talking as though the demon was not there and then after bearing the agony for a while Kenneth Hagin became annoyed and he rebuked the demon and instantly the demon disappeared as soon as the demon disappeared Jesus spoke to him and said I was waiting for you to do that he said but Lord how can you be here and a demon will come in here I thought you are Lord you are, the Bible says all oh, demons tremble then Jesus told him is it not written in my word that in my name they shall cast out demon. Jesus was not included. Just the same way in Genesis 1, he said, let them have dominion. That from that point, God was exempted from anything on earth. That was the reason why when God came to the, to the garden, when man fell, he started asking questions. He started with Adam. Why? Because that was the custodian of authority. Is it that God didn't know what happened? He knew. But he had kept people. He had given dominion to man. And so from that time henceforth, God was no longer responsible for anything that will happen on earth. Lord, when will my story change? God is ever ready to change your story. But are you ready to partner with him? Because it's your partnership with him that gives him license to operate. As far as God is concerned, he is illegal on earth. Except a man invites him. And God told me one thing. God said, you can decide to play Christianity like other people in your city. 
and excuse my move during your time or you can decide to become rugged and go all out for me and then watch how i will use your life as a pivotal to bring a move friends the move of god is a man the move of god is you looking at me the day you begin to move that's when god will move the day you begin to pray that's when god will begin to operate the bible says there is the arm of the lord too short that he will deliver us are his ears too deaf that he will hear he says no but what has happened your sin has separated notice the bible didn't say your sins he said your sin not sins because every time we refuse to partner with god our our action our activity by that is is indirect rebellion to his government god is looking for a man to move god is looking for a man to move in your family god is looking for a man in this territory any territory or any region in this country that you find christianity almost marginalized and isolated is because god does not have men who have paid the price to align with him and become witnesses in that territory so that the kingdom of darkness will no longer hold sway so this night before we stand to pray i leave you with a choice but before i give, I give you that choice i just want to clarify your understanding that the move of god was not necessarily what you thought it was that god will sovereignly just come and begin to interrupt no the move of god is when you decide to partner with him you may be weak but are you willing to sell yourself out you may be a lady but are you willing that god will use you i sought for a man and you know what i told myself that as long as i'm alive i will pay the ultimate price it doesn't matter how far god will stretch me you know that song you lift me high you stretch me wide i am greater because of you you lift me high you stretch me wide i am greater because of you as for me i've decided to give my all to god it doesn't matter how far god will take me but as long as i will see him move in my time as long as i will see the kingdom of darkness resisted to a standstill i don't know about you but i came from a place where idol worship is prevalent to witchcraft that they do one for my village i don't know maybe in your village there's there's white witchcraft <laughs> you know that's that's the deception now in nigeria they said there's white witchcraft their own witchcraft is not for no there's nothing like that oh, witchcraft is witchcraft some of us come from regions where the entire inhabitants have been dedicated to one serpent or to one water how do i know why is it that every time in your dreams you keep seeing serpents now the reason why we have regions and territories in nigeria where the power of darkness is prevalent is because there were human beings like you that sold themselves to the devil and became pathways they became routers by which the devil can come in and enslave an entire generation now god is looking for those who are willing to open themselves it's no longer raising an altar for god it's you becoming the altar your life becomes like what i call a router how many of you know a router it's an electronic computer device it is used to it is used to, to it, it has a way of just aligning frequencies together so that there can be passage of information or data or in, in, within that within that place or within that space a router is a man who has become a bridge between the realm of the spirit and the physical and through your life there can be a diffusion of power there can be a diffusion of another culture another life another system another civilization 
that was the life of Elijah when 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 he was about to be carried to heaven the Bible says chariots of fire separated him those chariots of fire were the transport systems of heaven in other words Elijah was a heavenly citizen while he was on earth that's why the convoy had to be a transport system from heaven and Elisha who carried that mantle when Elisha was to die the Bible says the king came to Elisha and he wept he said my father my father the chariot of Israel and its horsemen if you read it in the living Bible translation this is how it reads he said my father my father you are the strength of Israel in other words you are the defense of Israel so that was their symbol that spiritual uh, 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 um, lineage that that spiritual patriarchy their symbol was a symbol of chariots of fire and horses these were men that because of their being alive on earth there were things happening between the realm of the spirit and the physical at all time Elijah would look at them and say, if I be a man of God, let fire come. It came down once. It came down twice. So that you know it was not, he didn't calculate it. It was not guesswork. I sought for a man. I sought for a man. I sought for a man. What if it takes your entire lifetime to pay the price that will undo the cost that has been laid on that family? some of us are here i want to announce to you by the spirit some of us are here and you don't even know why god is so specific about your training probably you can guess that you are going to be called into ministry but you think the ministry is around here there are some of us here that the anointing you are carrying the nations you are to be sent to they are still suffering until the day you are completely yielded to god and then God will open that door and send you there. And then you see that by your stepping into that country, revival breaks out. That's what God came to do in this conference. That saviors will be born. It's an alarm that he wants to sound. And that alarm will only be heard by the saviors themselves. It's a spiritual sound, a spiritual cry. Calling for a holy convocation. People may know you to just be an usher in your church, but brother, there is a generational anointing on your life. People may know you to just be a welfare assistant in your church, or maybe an office boy where you work, but there is a mantle for territories on your life. Today, I came to sound the alarm, and the alarm is thus, I sought for a man. Will you give God your life? Will you lend your life to him? Will you choose not to give in to the pleasures of this world that you can enjoy like your contemporaries and say, Lord, I don't care if I will look strange, but I'll pay the price to reveal you to my generation. I remember when we started this ministry, I think it was 2018. I was praying one night and you know, everything was just stagnant. Nothing was moving. And I knew that there was something wrong. I shared this and then we'll pray. And I began to pray that particular period. I remember God told me to walk around this city. Don't try it though. If God doesn't tell you, don't try it. This leg, this two leg, I trekked around this city for seven days. Don't try it. Don't do it because you, have, if you go and do it on your own. I, it came by instruction. Every day, walk and cycle a particular location i think you remember that period and i did okay six days and i remember the night of the fifth day when i came back and i'll do you do you i'll do that fasting then when you come back in the evening that's when you break your fast that night the night of the fifth day while i was praying i was praying that night and i was i had an experience i can't really call it a vision as it were I don't know but because it was like I was I was taken from my body and God took me in the spirit and I began to ascend on the air Kai if you are ah, if you pay the price to relate with the realm of the spirit you will know that things are easier there there is enough space in the air than there is on the land have you noticed there is no traffic in the air no aeroplane jams each other it's only on land
and I was taken in that vision in the spirit up the air and I went to where that welcome to Meduguri that place near Bruno Express and I stood facing it I didn't know that a few years later they will construct a bridge there I think there's a bridge the same way that bridge is when you stand and face it that was how I stood in the spirit world and then I, my eyes were opened in the spirit and I saw two dragons red fierce dragons wrapped around that gate their eyes are as big as a human face and when I zoomed to their eyes I, I saw what looked like informations like writings and God told me these are the spirits controlling that gate of this city and so they have in their record everyone that comes into that city, this city so they will scan you if you are here for kingdom assignment they will do everything to frustrate you that's why the moment you got admission and came here your prayer life died you think it was ordinary you got a job you came to this town with fire after seven days your fire started going out ah welcome to the school of the spirit and in that vision God told me deal with those spirits and then I rebuked the spirit when I came back from the vision I was on my bed pray and then my eyes opened. now this is literally literally while I was on my bed praying I already I could feel a dark presence around me let me tell you something about darkness eh? the real darkness which is from the kingdom of hell it's not this type that there's no light to you can feel it when you come under that atmosphere it triggers fear inside of you i wish i can explain how the realm of the spirit operates just so that somebody can decide to stand up this this night i began to feel fear inside of me and i felt the darkness and when i opened my eye literally i saw a man standing in front of me putting on black and he was wearing what looked like a mafian suit you remember the vision and on the end the helm of his suit were writings in silver silver color and i couldn't read what was on those writings and the holy spirit asked me say can you read what is there i said no he said that is the identity of that spirit so long as you cannot read the identity of that spirit it means that it has superiority over you in the realm of the spirit and god told me that was the principality of this city so if today there is something like a move of God happening through this platform, you should know where it came from. I sought for a man. Friends, there are powers that we must bring down. There are contentions that must happen. There are strongholds that must be broken. The Bible says these are a people robbed. They are spoiled and snared in their holes. They are taken for a prey and none delivers. They are taken for the spoil and none cry at restore. This night, God wants to anoint those that will cry restore to their generation. I said God wants to anoint those that will cry restore to this generation. You may say your own is a family cause and all of that. When you begin to partner with God, when you begin to arise in the place of prayer, when you begin to operate by supernatural strength, you will know that an altar that has lasted for 14 generations can come down in one generation. I'm telling you. That was the reason why Gideon, before he started his walk, when the angel disappeared, the Lord spoke to him and said, this night, go and pull down the altar of Baal. Because if you don't pull down that altar, it will limit what I want to do through you. You can't deliver a generation when you yourself need deliverance. And this night is a wake-up call. We are going to pray. The first step to seeing the move of God is to partner with Him in prayer. I'm not talking about the kind of prayer you pray and then satisfy yourself that you have prayed. I'm talking about a prayer that forces God your way. Have you gone on that kind of prayer exercise before? You pray until God is attracted to your, 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 your location. You pray until your room traps the presence of God. You pray until your life traps and holds the dimension of God that is not common. I'm showing you how men can move the hand of God. God is almighty. He does as he please, but prayer can manipulate him. You will know when you begin to pray. 
The Bible spoke of a king called Hezekiah. God told him through the prophet, set your house in order, you will die. The man turned to the wall and began to pray. And while the prophet was walking out for the first time, I thought the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent of his word. Has he, has he said a thing, shall he not do it? Has he commanded, shall he not make it good? The Bible says as, El, as Isaiah walked out, God spoke to him and said, return back and tell him I'm adding 15 more years. Now, you see, God... That looked like he changed his mind. Or that looked like he lied. Or he repented of his word. And it's true that God cannot lie. And God cannot repent of his word. But God can change his mind. The Bible didn't say God cannot change his mind. The Bible says God cannot lie. And God cannot do what? Repent of his word. But the Bible did not say God cannot change his mind. If only you know how to move the hand of God, God will change his mind over and over again for your sake. You remember my story? I've told some of us here. We went to Bill. Some of you from Bill, I think you were there. Went there for a meeting. And then I mounted the podium the first day. And began to preach and prophesy over that city. And I think right now, exactly those prophecies are happening. For instance, the Army University, we prophesied that the road, that market road. I told them, I said, as a sign of all that has been said that is of God, rain will fall tomorrow. And everybody went to the house. And I went back, and the sky didn't look like it will fall, not even by weather forecasting. I said, bro, if you, rain does not fall, you are in supo. Then I took my brother, 2 a.m. Was it 2 a.m.? We woke up in the night, and then we began to pray. Shakos kapranda kataba, lepa korasi kabandaka, rendo subrabala katia. The Bible says, Elijah told Ahab, get thee up, for I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah went up the mountain and put his head between his thighs. Friends, we prayed like that. By 7 a.m., I went to check the window. The sun that rose up that day, as it was Sunday. So the sun came for Sunday. But we refused to stop. We kept praying. And we prayed from 2 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Non-stop prayer. You know that kind of prayer you pray until your jaw cannot move again. You have not gone there. That's why you're anointed. You are not anointed. That's why you are not seeing signs and wonders. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, they are for signs and wonders. It, by declaration, yes, but if you want to see it, there are buttons you have to press. Somebody say, well, this one is spiritual. It doesn't have anything to do with finance. Do you know that there is a code you can crack in the spirit when you pray and it affects your finances? We finished the prayer when I had a note in my spirit that it was done. There was still sun in the sky. We went around our business. 1 p.m., the cloud began to change. Long story short, before we arrived the hall, rain fell. I'm not telling you what I read in the Bible. This is me. I'm talking to you. And I just came to tell you that if God can do it with me, there are some of you that God will do times 10 if only you begin to arise. If only you begin to arise. Look at our fathers of faith. Some of them, you notice that before God started to use them, there were afflictions or there were certain limitations on their life that they had to conquer and then God could use them to bring liberation. That's the reason why maybe that sickness is still in your body. Until you begin to touch a higher law in the spirit that will check that sickness out. That's when you will now know that God raised you as a healer and a deliverer. Not just as one that will suffer. Are we ready to pray? I sought for a man. I sought for a man. If only you can give God your knees. If only you can give God your heart. God is looking for a place where his fire can burn. God is looking for a human vessel that will be an altar to him. Can you make your life that altar? And then watch how things can escape the realm of the spirit to the physical. I'm telling you, not, you don't need to be in ministry to do it. If only you can dedicate your life to God and say, I will not stop until I see a move of God. Your life becomes a channel. It's in you, Lord. 
it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you be on your feet is in you lord is in you lord we know there's more that's we will never settle for less and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found we will never settle for less we'll never as you sing you let it resound from your heart there's more than We know we will never settle for less. We know that's more than. Come on, sing it. It's in you, say. It's in you. We know. It's in you. Raise your voice and declare it. Let it be a confession of faith. Let it be an oath you are taking. Let it be a declaration you are making. We will never. We know this one. One more time. One more time. Say we will never settle for less. Listen, we are going to pray. Listen, after I read that book, after I read about the Moravian Falls in God's generals, that was when I decided. I said I would give myself to prayer. I will pursue God until my life reveals Him. This had nothing to do with ministry. It's only that it, it only just matches that God has called me into ministry. But aside from ministry, my life was already going to pay that price to reveal God. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your voice in the next two minutes and say, Lord, I avail myself. Lord, I avail myself. Enough of the distractions. Enough of the persecutions. Enough of the tossing and, to and the, the tossing to and fro. Enough of the vicissitudes of life. I avail myself like the apostle said. But we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. Lord, I avail myself for your use. I avail myself for your move. I avail myself that my life will become a channel. Come and open your mouth and pray. Make it a desperate cry. Make it a desperate cry. Make it a desperate cry. Make it a desperate prayer. Yes, I've seen your hand in my life. But compared to that which is to be seen, this is but nothing. This is but little. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Lord, I'll open your mouth and pray. Lord, I avail myself. I know there is more. I know there is more. If it will take me the rest of my life, I will see a move of God in my time. If it will take me the rest of my life, it will take me pressure. If it will take me affliction. If it will take me whatever. 
I'm willing to pay the price. I avail myself to see your hand and walk in my life. To see your hand mightily. Whether as a businessman, whether as a military officer, whether as a man of God, a woman of God, whether as a student, even as a student, proud. Lord, I avail myself that my life must give you glory, that my life must display a move on campus. I'm not satisfied. I'm not content with what I've seen. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Catherine Guma said once to the Holy Spirit, she said, Lord, all I have is nothing. But if you can take nothing and use nothing, then use me. If you can use nothing, use me. My friends may laugh at me. My family may despise me. My neighbors may reject me. But Lord, if you are willing to use anyone, use me. Use me. Come and pray. 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 Let fire fall upon my life afresh and pick me in this conference. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Let something come upon my life. Let something come upon my heart. Let something come upon my life. looking for somebody in your family. God is looking for someone in your territory. God is looking for a man. I sought for a man. Will you avail yourself? It's a God. It's an awakening.
Malakabarusia. Something fresh is about to fall on your life. Something fresh is about to fall. Haya, haya. Hey, hey. Haya, haya. Hey, hey. Haya. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must shift. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your life must change. Hallelujah. 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 Please lift your hands. Please lift your hands. That guy behind you. Is that Stanley? Touch that guy wearing white. Yeah. Are you Stanley? Are you Stanley? Are you Stanley? You are Stanley? Come. Is there an, another Stanley here? Just, I just want to be new because I heard Stanley. Is there an, another Stanley here? Okay, you are the one. No, I will pray for you. Just stand. I will pray for you. God, God mentioned your name, Stanley. Please lift your hands everywhere. Two impartations and we are done tonight. But before I go to the main one, while we're praying, I heard the Lord whisper in my ears, I am restoring lost fires. Lift your hands. Lost, lost fires. Lost fires. Lost flames. Lift your hands. You used to feel the presence of God in your time of prayer with the Lord. There are certain experiences you used to have with the Lord, but now it's like it's no longer there for a long time. And you have been longing to get it back. You have been longing to receive it. For some of you, it's a spiritual gift or something. Lift your hands. It's about to be re restored. Your life must change. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I count to seven, all across this room from my left to my right, everyone here that needs a restoration in their spiritual life, restoration of hunger, restoration of fire, restoration of grace, restoration of spiritual gifts, restoration of your presence, restoration of anything that was lost spiritually. Lord, as I count to seven, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let it be activated right now. My goodness, I sense the power of God. Lift your hands. I sense the fire of God moving all across this place. And by the count of seven, it will be restored. Lost grace, lost giftings, lost dimensions of the presence of God. I declare, let it be restored now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I declare restore, 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 help them, restore, restore, by fire, restore, 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 restore.
yourself then. This row here, everybody here, lift your hands. I would have left this for Sunday, but I just heard God whisper very quick in my ears. This place, there are four prophets here. This place, and your day of ordination is now. Where are they? Holy Ghost, at the count of four, where are they? One, two, three, four, touch. Help them, help that young man. Stand, stand him up. I'll pray for him. Lift your hands. I want to pray. This impartation I want to do now. While I was praying this afternoon, I saw 11 people. But there may be more than 11. Please, just help them. A lot of people, a lot of things may happen. Please help them so that they don't enjoy themselves. But God said there are people he would anoint this night. I felt literally when I was praying. This afternoon, I felt a hand on my head. And God said, there are people I will anoint this night. And what is about to come on you is what I call the way makers. And listen, follow me. It's called the way makers anointing. In other words, it's going to be an anointing and a mantle for breakthrough. You are going to be the first. You are going to be a pioneer. Either in your family, either in your sphere of influence, either from the territory or G region where you come from. I saw 11 people, but they may be more than. And I'm going to count 21. That way make us anointing by the mantle of the Holy Ghost, by the fire from above. Lord, let it rest upon them. The way make us anointing, the breakthrough anointing, the anointing that makes you break limits to do what has not been done. The anointing that makes you challenge the status quo, either in business or in ministry or in family or in any ramification of life. As I count 21, Holy Ghost, all across this hall and online, pick them now. Pick them by your fire. One, two, lift your hands. Three, four, that's it. Five, six, that's it, that's it, that's it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes, 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 like a wave, like a wave all across this place. Rain makers anointing. Let it rest mightily. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And now 21. Holy Ghost. 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 Stanley. Hold my hand. No, no. Stanley. Just stand there. Hold my hand. Just hold my hand with one hand. Thus says the Lord, you will break limits. You will break limits. And there is a revival anointing that is inside of you. I stir it up by the Holy Ghost. I stir it up by the Holy Ghost. And I declare that from today, your life shifts to another place in destiny right now touch in the name of jesus help me be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted i see an angel moving around this place there are people god is still touching and there is nothing you can do all of you here lift your hands just this room oh lord my eyes are on 
be magnified. Just lift your hands. I see an angel walking all across this place. There are people that God will touch. Be magnified. Just leave them. Leave them under the anointing. I can find my way. Be magnified. As I pass. As I pass. The hand of God is coming on some people. You are exalted, yeah. and there is nothing you can All of you here. All of you. All, all of you here. Hold your hands, all of you. Just hold your hands. Lift it up. Just allow me with the strings. Oh Lord, be magnified. Please leave them. Just you can only stand behind them, Lord. Leave them. There's a grace coming on them. That woman re wearing red scarf. I see a prophetic mantle on her life, and right now I stir it. As I point to you, the power of God comes upon you. I stir it up. She will begin to prophesy. You hear her literally. Just help them, please. Oh, Lord. Be man. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Are you ready to receive something? Are you ready? Lift your hands. Glasses, can you see me from there? No, stand there. Just lift your hands. Look at me. Is something wrong with your eyes? There's something wrong. Lift your hands, Father. This grace that you are showing me, let it rest upon her. And as God is anointing you afresh because you are a vessel, God is healing your eyes as well right now it's coming upon you take that anointing now yeah i see it oh find out what's wrong with her eyes be fine father we give you praise wave your hands and just bless him Before we close tonight, if you know you are here and you are not born again, you come to church, you go for programs, but you really have not said yes to Jesus. Or perhaps you used to be born again and a believer, but certain things have distracted you. Just help them, please. And you want to rededicate your life afresh to God. Let's give you this opportunity. I'm going to count 1 to 15. Wherever you are, you are here. You need to say yes to Jesus or you need to rededicate your life afresh. You don't know where you are with God and you want to make your ways right with him. Please don't be ashamed. I will count 1 to 15 and after that, I will close this chapter. Wherever you are, I want you to walk to the front boldly and as they come, please celebrate God for them. I'm going to count 1 to 15. If you know you are here, you need to say yes to Jesus. God is calling you now. Come. One. Two, three, four. Don't be ashamed. Win the argument in your heart. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is a young man. You are dark in complexion. The Holy Spirit is convicting you now, and you need to come here. 
you need to you need to make your ways right with the lord you are dark in complexion you are a young man as i've seen you the lord is calling you and i'm seeing a lady too you are light skin you need to rededicate your life again god is calling you 10 11 12 13 somebody help me with this lady 14 15 I'm going to close this chapter I'm seeing a lady you are light skin the Holy Spirit is convicting you now you need to rededicate your life I'm going to close this chapter wherever you are I want you to come please find out come with the lady I need to know and I want to pray for her for, for her eyes can we just stretch our hands towards this young man? Where is that lady God is showing me? You are light skin. You are not fat. You are light skin. And the Holy Spirit is convicting you now. You need to rededicate your life. After this, please don't come and see me. I'm seeing you right now. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. You are light skin. Where is she? Good. Can we celebrate God for them? Listen. Now, both of you, whether you are rededicating or it's a fresh start, I want you to pray this prayer and believe it from the depth of your heart. God means business with you. That's why you are out here. God pulled up this program for you. And the Bible says there is joy in heaven when one, one sinner, just one. Are we together? So I want you to repeat this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again for my sins I acknowledge my sin and today I receive eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I am born again I declare that Satan death hell sin and the grave has no hold over my life and I declare that I belong to Jesus both now and forever in Jesus name father I present these ones to you that your son died for and I declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven I decree and declare that they receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I declare that they receive eternal life in their spirits. In the name of Jesus. I declare that from today it is forward ever and backward never. I declare that they will serve you all the days of their lives. I come against every distraction in their lives and I declare that from today they receive the victory over sin and over Satan. In Jesus name. Amen. Can we celebrate God for them? Now, the two of you, listen. I just want you to walk, follow this young lady. She will talk to you, get your contacts, and pray with you, okay? We would love to reach out to you. What a wonderful decision you've made. God bless you. Please celebrate God for them. Yes. What's wrong with her? First of all, Papa, what's wrong with this This eye? is Sister Hope, uh -huh. a student of University of Mediguri, an insect bite her yesterday, and she has been using that glass since yesterday. An insect bit you. Can we sit down briefly? We'll close. Let's just do this miracle and we'll be done. An insect beat her yesterday. Yes. On your eye. Yes, sir. On your eye. Yes, sir. And it closed. So you can't use that eye. I'm seeing just a little bit. I don't see clear. You don't see clear. Yes. How about God heal you right now? Yes. Come up stage. That eye will open now. no stand no 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 no. don't worry stand, stand it's okay it's okay god will god will do the miracle now i just want you to see the eye at least the light can reflect on her face sorry my dear i'm sorry don't worry you'll be healed right now you believe do you believe when god heals you you will believe when i said you're a vessel because there's a prophetic grace on your life there is a prophetic well that must be stirred up all right but let's get you healed first okay now, let me tell you one thing about walking in the gifts of the Spirit, especially when it comes to healing. One of the easiest things to do 
is to operate the supernatural and walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The reason why it's easy is because you are not the one doing it. Case closed. Did you hear what I said? It has nothing to do with you. It becomes difficult when you think you are the one that can do it. Are you hearing me? It is God that is at work within us both to will and to do. The Bible says, and they went everywhere and preached. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming their words with sign. How many of you believe God will heal her? How many of you can see, just give them a space. How many of you can see her right eye? It's short, right? Now you are going to see clearly with that eye. And the swelling will go down. And it will open. It's even opening now already. Something happened. And now I know he touched and made me old. He touched me. He touched me. Oh, I know the joy that floods my soul. The presence of God is on this stage right now, very strong. Something happened, and now I know. And made me. What's happening? The eyes, you can see. This is what happens when God comes to town. I said, This is what happens when God comes to town. Stand up, my dear. Stand up. Stand up. Please get out of all right let's perfect the miracle the eyes she will open it completely and she will see hold this mic for me father in the name of jesus i thank you because you love to heal and right now in the name of jesus eyes open open i command every poison to get out right now let the swelling go out completely Lord, I thank you for this miracle. Woo. I feel the glory of God. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in this room. Thank you, Father. How is your sight now? How is your sight? You can see clear. The swelling is down now. Open it. See. It wasn't as it wasn't like this before. Hold on. Let's test. Um, just face this. Please. Can you see? Can you see that blue light over there? Yes, sir. I can see. Can you see what is there? There's a black something there. Yes, sir. What is it? It's a laptop. Sir. It's a laptop. Yes, sir. How about the person? Yes, sir. He's wearing white. He's wearing white. Yes, sir. Take her down. Before the end of this night, the swelling is gone completely. But your sight is restored. Can we stand up, clap our hands, and give God praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we blessed tonight? We are going to close the meeting here. Sorry, we're not welcome first timers. Maybe from tomorrow or Sunday, we'll do all that and have our normal service. But listen, when you go back, those of you who are students, I want you to drag your friends and your roommates. Okay? And then those of us who stay in town, I want you to ensure you bring as many as possible. A revival is breaking out from this place. God is going to move in signs and wonders like you have never seen. And I dare you, listen, 
I dare you, when you are coming on Sunday, come with people that have all kinds of afflictions. Blind, deaf, paralyzed. Carry them with their bed like that and come. Are you hearing me? I dare you to prove the God of wonders on Sunday. There's going to be signs and wonders like you have never seen. And guess what? Not only are we going to witness signs and wonders, but the anointing for signs and wonders will come upon some people. It is time for you to walk in miracles. I said it is time for you to walk in miracles. How many of you believe? These signs shall follow them that believe. Father, we give you the praise tonight and we bless your name. We give you the glory. And we thank you for tomorrow and all that you will do this weekend. Visit us and let there be a mighty move of your spirit in this city. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name.